Our boy Sal Mayorana of the Rochester Democrat Chronicle with Armin in the back. He covers the Buffalo Bills, but he was also covering the Bills when Ryan Fitzpatrick and Chan Gailey were together in Buffalo. What are you looking at me like that for? Did I screw something up? I'm just amazed that he was able to make time for us today. I, I mean, you know this man is a little busy with camp going Sal, on and everything. Sal, it's funny, man, because I, I hear that our producer, that you were so knee-deep in Buffalo Bills, as you always are, that our producer broke the news to you about uh, Geno Smith getting sucker punched in the locker room. Yeah, I had no idea. I'm working on. I'm doing a big story on Kim Bagula, Bill's, um, Bill's yeah. co-owner. So I'm kind of off the. Uh, I'm off the grid today for a couple of days, away from Bill's camp. So I wasn't even paying attention to Twitter. I'm just focused on this story. And then your guy calls and tells me about it. It was the first I'd heard, and I I just can't even believe that anything like that could happen in today's NFL. You know, back in the old days, you could almost see that type of thing happening because you know the game was a lot more vicious and. Sometimes teammates, you know, there were a lot of well, there was a lot more fights in camp back then than they are today. But um, yeah, I can't believe that some guy would just fall off and hit Geno Smith in the face, and he probably deserved to get cut for that for sure. Well, don't forget, uh, Rex did draft this uh, this in in Impali guy, so maybe he'll show up and you can report on yeah, him. Yeah, great. <laughs> show up in Buffalo, maybe he'll uh, That's right. punch EJ Manuel for us. You have nothing else to talk about in Buffalo, so don't worry about that. Sal Mirano of the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle with Armin in the back. Sal, thanks for dropping everything and, and talking to us today. What do you remember about Ryan Fitzpatrick and Chan Gailey? What should our takeaway be as we look at the 2015 Jets now? Well, hey, look, Fitz, you know, the, the one thing Fitz was was a game manager. And I know everyone hates that term, but Fitz is the kind of guy, he, he actually is the ideal backup quarterback because he can go in there at a moment's notice and get the job done for you. You know, he proved in Buffalo, um, but he really isn't the guy that you can go to for 16 weeks and expect him to lead you to the playoffs unless you have a roster that's constructed to do it. In fact, right now, I think Bill's fans would take Fitzpatrick back in a heartbeat because he'd be the best quarterback on this roster. And really, you know, although he's not Aaron Rodgers, he'd be a guy who would fit in great here because with all the weapons the Bills have and his great defense, He's the right guy. Now, is he the right guy for the Jets at this point? I don't think their roster is quite as good as, as Buffalo's, but I don't think Jets fans should be too, too worried about it. Um, he, I, I think Fitz is probably at this stage of his career a better quarterback than Geno Smith. Geno might be the future, but, you know, Fitzpatrick will be able to hold the fourth down. And if the Jets are any good, it's not going to be Fitzpatrick blowing it for him. I, I think Fitz will be able to manage it and guide them through, you know, whatever happens those first few weeks of the season. Sal, I, I always kind of look at, at, at Fitz and, and think that once he got that big contract, he kind of he kind of fell off a little bit. Maybe tried a little too hard to win games instead of manage them. Is, is that a fair assessment, or is that me just looking through fan glasses? Yeah, I don't know if that was the case. I mean, you know, money does change some guys, but Fitz, I don't think Fitz is that guy. I mean, he really is a pretty down to earth, grounded kind of guy. Even though he you know he went to Harvard, and people you know think he has errors and all that, he doesn't. He is a normal guy as you could ever find. I, I really enjoyed uh, Fitz when he was in Buffalo, so I don't think money changed him at all. I think what's changed Fitz is the same week that he got that contract with the Bills in 2011, he took a vicious shot to his rib in the next game, and he was never the same that season. If you remember that season, they got off to a pretty good start, and then they, they were 5-2 and two at the time he got hurt, and he never played well the rest of the way, and uh, then it went downhill from there. So I don't think it was the money... Um, I think Fitz is, like I said, a pretty even kill guy. He just isn't the most talented, you know, quarterback out there. You know, he's got limitations. He is, his biggest problem is he just finds a way to make the wrong play at the wrong time. Sometimes he'll try to squeeze one in to double coverage and it gets picked. And, you know, he's always made that one mistake that really cost you. But, you know, his overall body of work, again, I don't think Jets fans should be too worried right now about him going to take over for Gino because there really isn't much difference between those two guys. Yeah, I feel like you were just talking about Gino right now. I feel like yeah. you had to clarify you were talking about Ryan Fitzpatrick, Sal Mayorana. So the, business as usual, Jets fans. Of the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle <laughs> reacting to Gino Smith being out for six to ten weeks after getting sucker punch. Sal saw uh, Chan and Fitzpatrick together in Buffalo, which is what you're going to see now with the New York Jets. Sal, here we are, August 11th, about two weeks through Bill's camp. What is your biggest takeaway thus far with Buffalo Bills. Uh, well, like I just told you, I'd love to see Fitz in a Bills uniform right now because <laughs> there, there wouldn't be a quarterback competition. He'd be the guy, as far as I was concerned. So you know, we're we're ongoing with this situation. Neither one, neither of these three guys 
um, has taken a step, a positive step forward and shown that they are truly the guy. He's, Rex said he's going to start Matt Castle on Friday against Carolina, and that basically is because Castle has probably had a few more of the first-team reps in camp, um, and he hasn't been... He hasn't been awful. He hasn't been great, but he hasn't been awful. And also, 11-year veteran, I think he's just kind of shown him the seniority card to give him that first start. But it really means nothing. And Rex kind of said that. This means nothing in the grand scheme of things. They're going to use the first two games, he said today, actually. I heard I looked at the transcript. They're going to use the first two preseason games to try to sort it out. And then when you go to that third game where the starters play, you know, at least a half, maybe three quarters, I think he wants to have a starting quarterback in place for that particular game. Now, if that's going to happen or not, I don't know. Because, like I said, right now it's a dead heat and nobody has pulled ahead. So I'm not sure it will be settled in those first two games. But that's Rex's plan. That's what he hopes is going to happen. Well, we'll uh, we'll have to uh, revisit this conversation on Monday if you've got any free time because we're coming to you. We're coming to camp. Yeah, that's You're true. You're coming Monday, huh? Yeah, we're going to bug you on Monday. That's accurate. That's factual. All right. Well, I will. Uh, I will definitely be there on Monday. I'll be back on the grid by then. And plus, he sounds disappointed. Sorry. It, yeah. It's like son of a bee. I'll be back by then. Uh, Sal, uh, pl- plug your story. You have a you have a big uh, Pagula story coming up. Yeah, yeah. I, I sat down with her uh, on the other day. I guess it was Friday, and we did a like a forty five minute interview, one on one video, uh, stills, the whole thing. It's supposed to run, I believe, next Sunday, August twenty third. So it'll be a big splash in the DNC and then our, our website, obviously. But, um, yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of an exclusive interview, um, and she was fantastic. She's from Rochester. She's actually, oh, cool. um, you know, she was born in Korea and was orphaned there, and a family from Fairport uh, adopted her when she was five years old. So she grew up here in Rochester for the first, uh, well, I guess through 11th grade. So she's kind of a native here, you know, in a way, and it's kind of a neat story to hear she is back as the Bills uh, co-owner. That's awesome. Sal Marana. The truth, baby. Getting Kim Pagula exclusive. That's exciting stuff. Sal, we'll see you Monday. Thank you so much for dropping everything and talking to us today. All right, guys. We'll see you then. All right, there goes Sal Marano of the Rochester Democrat Chronicle with Armin in the back on 104.5, the team.